Tonight on Gravitas, our top story is about Israel. It has gone to war against Hezbollah in Lebanon. In the last two days, Israel has launched twin attacks on the Lebanon-based Hezbollah. On Tuesday, thousands of pagers exploded in Lebanon, killing a dozen people. On Wednesday, walkie-talkies mysteriously detonated in Lebanon, killing another 20 people. These low-tech devices are used by Hezbollah for communication. It was pretty clear that the attacks must have been carefully planned. The booby-trapped pagers and walkie-talkies were the latest salvo in the decades-long conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. On Thursday, Israel's defense minister said that a new era of war was beginning, acknowledging Israel's role in a way in the shock attacks. It has pushed the region back to the brink of a wider conflict. But the question is, why now? Why did Israel launch this attack now? Did the U.S. know? How will Hezbollah respond to this? The blast appeared to throw Hezbollah into complete disarray, coming amid the war in Gaza and fears of an escalation at Israel's border with Lebanon. Israeli officials have not commented on the blast, but multiple reports have named Israel's spy agency Mossad as being responsible. In the immediate aftermath of the blast on Tuesday, one Hezbollah official described it as the biggest security breach in the group's history. Reports say that the pager and, walk and walkie-talkie detonation plan was complex and long in the making. It's not surprising Israel's Mossad has a long history of launching sophisticated attacks. For example, in 2020, Israel assassinated Iran's top nuclear scientist using an AI-assisted, robot-controlled, remotely via satellite. What's more, Israel has also used hacking to stymie Iran's nuclear development. You see, in Lebanon, as Israel targeted senior Hezbollah commandos, their leaders came to a conclusion. If Israel was going to go high-tech, Hezbollah would go low-tech. Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah has accused Israel of using cell phone networks to pinpoint the locations of Hezbollah operators. Nasrallah has been pushing for years for Hezbollah to invest instead in pagers. They are low-tech and they also have limited capabilities to receive data without giving away a user's location or any other compromising information as such. Of course, Israeli intelligence officials saw this as a huge opportunity. According to an explosive report in the New York Times, Israel set a plan into motion even before Hezbollah announced plans to expand the use of pagers. Israel's plan basically would see the establishment of a shell company, which would pose as an international pager producer, as per the report. That company would be called BAC Consulting. It would be a Hungary-based company that would be in contract to produce the devices on behalf of a Taiwanese company called Gold Apollo. But in fact, this was an Israeli front. Two more shell companies were also created. They would basically help mask the real identities of the people creating the pagers. Who were the creators, you ask? the Israeli intelligence officers. BAC reportedly produced pagers for Hezbollah separately. They contained batteries laced with the explosive PTN. These pagers containing explosives began shipping to Lebanon in the summer of 2022, according to the report. After Nasrallah denounced cell phones, the production of these pagers was re reportedly ramped up. According to the report, Nasrallah has issued a ban on the use of cell phones during meetings of Hezbollah operatives. He emphasized that the details of Hezbollah movements and plans should never be conveyed using, using cell phones. Instead, he has instructed Hezbollah members to carry pagers at all times. In the event of war, these pagers would be used to direct fighters to their designated locations. And so over the summer, shipments of the pagers to Lebanon reportedly increased. Long story short, to Hezbollah, these pagers were a defensive measure.
But you see, for Israel, the pagers were like buttons. Buttons that could be pushed when the time seemed ripe. At that moment, seemed to come this week. Which then brings us to, que brings us to the question of why now? You see, on Sunday, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised to facilitate the return of over 70,000 Israelis displaced by fighting with Hezbollah. He vowed that the Israeli residents could not return without a fundamental change in the security situation in the north. Israel reportedly triggered pagers in Lebanon to create chaos. How were they set off? According to reports citing Israeli intelligence and defense officials, Israel triggered the pagers to send out a message to the Hezbollah operatives in Arabic. A message that appeared as though it had come from Hezbollah's top leadership. And soon after the pagers beeped, Lebanon was thrown into chaos. As they exploded simultaneously, some a few minutes apart, Many were injured as ambulances crawled through the streets. The injured were taken to hospitals. The Hezbollah said at least eight of its members were killed. But ordinary citizens were also drawn into the fray. A day later, thousands gathered in Beirut to attend a funeral for the people killed in the blast. And chaos erupted once again. There was another explosion. It was a confirmation, the most common of communication devices could be turned into bombs. So far, at least 32 people have been killed in the back-to-back -back attacks in Lebanon. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has said, and I'm quoting, we are opening a new phase in the war. It requires courage, determination, and perseverance from us. Was he admitting Israel's role in the attack? In the aftermath, Jordan's foreign minister Eman Safadi accused Israel of pushing West Asia to the brink of a regional war. Safadi, in fact, accused Israel of orchestrating a dangerous escalation on many fronts. The immediate question on everyone's mind seems to be, how will Hezbollah now respond to this provocation? Is this a tactical win for Israel? Or will this escalate into a full-blown war between Israel and Hezbollah? The U.S., which has denied any involvement in the blast, has said that it is pursuing diplomacy to avert an escalation. Meanwhile, the United Nations Security Council will be meeting on Friday to discuss the Pager blast, and this has been scheduled following a request by Arab states. Among those injured in Tuesday's blast was Iran's ambassador in Lebanon, remember. On Wednesday, Iran's envoy to the U.N. said in a letter that it reserves rights under international law to take the required measures to respond to the attack. So is this then the start of a wider war? One that would see the direct involvement of the US and Iran? It may be years before the full story comes out, but even with the facts on the ground, it is pretty clear the conflict in West Asia is far from over. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.